<coughs> Hi, good evening everyone. So we are waiting for so once he joined we can start the session. Hi, Saibal. Okay, uh, so we are waiting for our another panel member for today. So meanwhile, uh, Ankita, can we can we start the session? Oh yes, I am ready. Okay. Okay. So hi, good evening, everyone. Hope you all are fit and safe at your place. My name is Aparna and I'm heading digital marketing for Aritik and I'll be your moderator and host for this webinar. As you all uh, know that we conduct the, this, this webinar every Thursday or at 5 p.m. And Meghmala generally hosts the show but right now well and that is why she's not able to do that. So I'll be uh, doing her that in behalf of her. Okay. So welcome to our fifth live webinar of Aritic Live and today's topic is achieving a great customer experience with unified marketing automation. So now coming to a small introduction about our company, Aritic is a unified marketing automation platform for the B2B business team. Our parent company is Data AG Software Private Limited, a Bengaluru based company started operation in 2015 with two major SaaS product platforms. EasySendy and Aritic. EasySendy is focused on SME and SMB businesses. Aritic is focused on customers from mid-enterprise and enterprise. Both Aritic and EasySendy product platforms are used by 2,000 plus companies across globe. And from January 2022, we started getting deep into India and SEA market as well. Okay, so now talking about this platform Aritic Live where we are all here for. So it is a platform that brings professional close to Aritic platform via Aritic Live. It is an online talk show organized for marketing, sales, business development, product leaders and working professionals. The talk show include webinar, webcast, podcast and live event from Aritic and partner network. Now. Coming back to our topic that is achieving a great customer experience with unified marketing automation. I wanted to uh, uh, like speak to you, tell you all a small introduction about the topic that we are going to uh, discuss today. So marketing is critical to a brand's long term success. However, because of an extraordinary hurdles and industry upheaval brought on by COVID-19, the B2B buying process is becoming lengthier and more complex than ever before. Maintaining one-to-one -one contact with leads, client and prospects are critical. Still this difficult uh, task has become much more difficult as firms respond to the pandemic by shifting to learner operations. Marketing automation comes to the rescue in this situation. It not only simplifies marketing tasks but also assists marketers in developing meaningful relationships with their prospects and consumers. Marketing automation is the ideal way to develop customer experience and CMOs worldwide are, are eager to invest in, in it to optimize the customer journey. 
Unified marketing automation collects data from website visit, download, sponsored commercials, social media, CRM, ERP, support desk, chatbot and social media activities to provide insight into current and potential customers behavior. It also aids the brand in determining the interest of the customers and where they are in overall purchasing process. As a result, a brand can tailor its plan to produce the desired response from its audience by using resourceful and comprehensive data. And to discuss all these things in detail, we have our speaker with us, Ankita Jain. So I would like to uh, tell you all about who, who exists exactly Ankita is. CMO of GoPesa. Exuberant, dynamic, youthful and worse of all these virtues is, is we presently were founder and marketing head of GoPesa.com. and she's a hard worker and great knowledge and market and successful and strategies and plans which were Ankita started from scratch. She made a social media page for GoPesa, which was followed by a simultaneous effort of building tie-ups for offline activation of the web page. Once the ground task was over, she started the whole marketing process with researching and strategizing. She is the brain behind the new GoPesa.com TV campaign, Don't Be a Kaddu. She has also sought to go beyond demographics in defining and engaging consumers always in the context that brings a live brand proposition. Being just 25 year old, her perspective and views are fresh and breaks the traditional norms of media. Apart from work, Ankita loves to cook and paint in her spare time, which soothes her mind and uh, rejuvenates her. Welcome Ankita to the Aritic Live platform and I would request you to uh, say some word if I have missed out anything. No, I think it was a commendable introduction and I'm I'm highly obliged on the introduction. Uh, the journey with GoPesa has been phenomenal. Uh, looking forward to a great discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ankita. Okay. Okay. So I think let's go ahead with the discussion. So uh, I would like to start the discussion with my first question. That is, what is exactly unified marketing automation? And do you think it is really helpful for all the marketers to implement unified marketing automation in their organization? Yeah, I think unified, unified marketing automation systems are really important. And uh, because uh, all of us as brands are doing multi-channel marketing, there are various teams assigned for the same. There are various people. So to, ta to, to track every task becomes very important. Look, marketing, I feel, is not about one channel, one messaging. So okay. there are multiple, there, uh, there, it is about a unified channel because what happens is a certain message might not have worked on a particular channel, but the same mass message might actually work on some other channel. Like on a mailer that might not have worked, but on SMS you might just get some great leads on the same. So uh, for that to you, for that to know, you need to have it all on the same platform. Otherwise, most of your time would go into coordination of various platforms and teams would not be aligned on the same. So for, to paint the big picture, to have a big picture in front of you, right in front of you while making any decisions, I think a unified platform is very important. Very correct. Very correct. Okay. So um, next question to you will be, how unified marketing automation is helping the brand to achieve great customer experience, according to you? So I think uh, I can I can talk from Gopesa point of view. So sure. we we provide cashback and coupons to uh, uh, to all of our customers. So wherever you're shopping, like you're shopping for Amazon, Flipkart, Ajio, Mintra, Jabong, whatever, whatever you're shopping, you uh, you will get cashback on all the shopping, irrespective you're doing a cash and delivery or something. 
But there are times when when a customer misses the cash back, and you know the transaction is not getting tracked in the system, and he comes back to the customer uh, service department and he is like, my cash back is not tracked, and it's actual money because it's something that he can transfer to the bank account. So that amount is really important. So yeah. uh, if because he uh, because the consume because of a unified uh, platform, even the customer service executive in, is able to understand that how important this customer is. I mean, the company has spent so much of money getting this customer. So if I have to give him a certain amount to retain him and confirm him to delight him, the customer support executive can actually take the decision on his own rather than going back and doing that to and fro. So for a, for a customer executive, it becomes easy that, okay, I can take this decision on my own and I can justify it as well that because, you know, this is such an important customer and every customer becomes important. Yes. They understand the value, they understand the cost that has gone behind acquiring that customer and because you understand the cost matrices that have gone behind it, uh, uh, getting that customer, the way it was, they were again and again targeted and finally the customer has converted on this offer. So the journey is pretty long and, and when, when, the, when the customer service person is actually witnessing the journey, he understands that this person has gone through a lot. So he needs to be delighted, he needs to be sol his problem needs to be solved in the best possible way it can. So for us at GoPesa, it works wonderfully well uh, because we we work with uh, because we work with real cash back, we work with real money. So each and every customer's problem is very important because we might just lose it if he doesn't get the cash back. Correct, correct. Okay, uh, Ankita, actually this question I just wanted to know, uh, like you said that don't be a kaddu. This is a campaign that you have started. So if you can let us know what exactly it is and what it, it is all about. So don't be a kaddu campaign is our TV campaign. So it, it, okay. it, it is about that uh, if I, it, it's very simple. If I tell you that there's a certain amount of money that you can get on every shopping that you're doing, be it your okay. medicine, your grocery, anything that you're doing, there's a yeah. certain amount of money on top of whatever discounts and coupons you're getting. And still you just by doing one extra click, just by visiting GoPesa before you actually go to Amazon or Flipkart and so on. Just by doing this extra click, you get this money. So, so that is why. I mean, it's it's like as simple as that. Don't be, don't be, don't be stupid. I mean, this is free money. Okay. Just grab it. Okay, okay, that looks really interesting. Okay, so uh, Ankita, next question I would like to um, like ask to you is, what does Web three mean for marketing and customer experience, according to you? Good. Oh, it's a very controversial topic, I think, uh, yeah. and it is the most happening topic to talk about right, right now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, there are two sides of every coin. Like when when five G is being discussed, there are two sides of it. When crypto is being discussed, there are two sides of it. There's a good side and there's a bad side of yes, it. Of course. Similarly, similarly for Web three, there are the, there is a good side and there's a bad side as well. Uh, Good side being that the power will shift from the big powerhouses to smaller companies. How will it shift? Because Web3 is a game of, is, is going to be a game of trust. Yeah. It is all about the game of value preposition. You know, when the consumer himself is deciding that, okay, I should give this, you know, consider it like a wallet and you have all the information. So it will be your digital wallet of information. You, you have every information about yourself in that digital wallet. Yeah. Now it is on you if you want to share it to Facebook or you want to share it to GoPesa. So the game will then come down to about the trust. The company that will ace its game in building trust is the one who will win it. Because if, if you can win the consumer's trust, uh, but trust is a very tricky thing again. Yes, of course, yeah. So, uh, so, tr uh, so winning the trust of a consumer is something that is difficult. But once you've won the trust, you have to maintain it and you have to live up to the expectation. So, Web 3.0 talks about cookie-less world, uh, which for companies like us who are, who have first-hand data is very good because we exactly know 
what people are shopping uh, because of the because of the platform that we have the cashback platform we exactly know what, where people are shopping what they are buying uh, be it on flipkart amazon i exactly know what their spending capacity is uh, only uh, because of the factors of the cashback ecosystem so so this is this is somewhat again uh, companies like us will become more important for brands because uh, they might they will come to us for such information yeah. uh, and uh, this is where for us because we are we are one of the ones who are giving money to the consumer and uh, we are helping them save in their every transaction that would uh, i think we have a good value proposition for the customer consumer to actually win in that uh data wallet for ourselves and i hope we win that data wallet from the consumer in web3 uh, but i think uh, web3 uh, will put lot of power in the hands of the consumer i hope the consumer utilizes it in a good way for b2b again there to, there is going to be very tricky i think the trust factor all that is is something that every marketing will have to focus on that how do you win the trust uh trust factor of the consumer and a strong value proposition two things businesses will have to really strongly think in web3 uh web3.0 is these two things trust and value proposition correct correct and if i talk about our industry that the saas marketing if we are saying again that you said trust is something it's not just only into the consumer format it's also for us as well you know these people trust us that is why they are coming to our platform they are interacting with us so many important data that is to them they are sharing with us so again trust is the very important thing in our industry as well so yeah thank you ankita this was really great to know about Okay, so my next question to you will be: What are some ways Web three is to set to transform customer experience? So for Web three, uh, the transfer of the customer experience, because I would say, uh, uh, the consumer right now, a lot of decision making is is on a hypothesis of a certain thing. Okay. So. where some brands will actually get the uh, advantage because the consumer is actually giving him the data about himself so the data will be correct it will not be based on a certain hypothesis so for consumer for for a customer experience because now when he is given the data himself he will expect a level quality a s level quality yes. you know yeah. it's in, even in terms of saas product if i talk about so as a brand when i when i tell when i tell any saas product that okay this is this is this is what i need i am clearly telling you my requirement is that okay uh, be it email be it sms i need to know which is the most effective channel which is the most effective consumer for me which which is what time what demographic all of it all of it so if i am giving a clear uh, clear picture of what i want the consumer uh, the consumer or a business would also expect the same in return that they get all their answers they get a a quality service and they do not have to explain again and again you know so i always tell i always tell this uh, i am sure all of you have had this experience while talking to facebook and google support executives i mean they just answering the same things again and yeah. again they don't give you a solution a solution driven approach is what will actually steal the limelight in web 3.0 because if you are just going around the bush it's not going to work you actually have to give the solution in the quickest time possible be it for us as a brand to the consumer or you as a uh, b2b business to brands like us so i think a uh, solution quick solution is something that will become the highlight for web very true actually whatever you are saying the point i can relate it to my industry as well like you said solution based is very important if we talk about our product again the email product the marketing automation product we follow the same thing solution we don't uh, believe in those chatbot kind of thing we believe in real time solution and that is why we provide 24 into 7 service the customer service because customer is everything to us so yeah definitely i think yeah it's really nice to know that two different industry follow the same norms again it's all about marketing yes absolutely 
yeah okay so next question again from web3 since you are talking a lot about web3 so i would like to know more about web3 so what all web3 brings to the customers and marketers i think lot of things a uh, lot of things which were in the dark which were to, for marketers to test and try i think uh, because the consumer has given the data himself uh, it would be very clear i mean rather rather it would be ask service rather than uh, give and think i mean the consumers would clearly know what they want and as brands would be just giving them what they want yeah uh, what would be a tricky business is to influence the decision making that would become a really tricky process like upselling them or uh, or cross selling them those would be the challenges i feel in the marketing space okay. because you know when the consumer is himself dictating the terms of the of the business and of the game then uh, as marketers that would something become very interesting to deal with that how do you upsell them and cross sell them because the consumers would be very clear right now upselling cross selling is something that is doable i mean okay. you look at the few matrix uh and then you are able to do that so roi again i think uh, i think return on the investments on marketing would be better but i think the overall margins would deplete okay. the reason the overall margins would deplete is because you know the margins lie in the upselling <laughs> for any business yeah be, be it for us as a consumer yeah. facing business or be it for you as a saas saas product of course uh, yeah. it always lies in the upselling Mm -hmm. and uh, if it, it's it's like i'm walking into a big bazaar and i'm just picking up what i wanted to pick up and i walk out i don't pick up anything additional it's a loss for the bazaar yes. i mean the the ma the major the major cut that big bazaar is making is on the counters on the billing counters the things that are kept on you know the last mile pushes that you mm -hmm. give and i think that is what is very important uh because because the decision making of in how it happens is something that we as brand also think and i think it's for all of us to think that you know cross selling and upselling and web 3.0 is something interesting to explore as well as okay okay i think yeah that's that's really interesting to know about what's coming in our way we as a marketer we waiting for something new to come in and then we can grab it for our business as well okay so uh, okay before continuing the session i would like everyone to know we have noted down all your question whatever you are putting in chat box we can take the question once uh, we are uh, any round so yeah you can put all question in the chat box and if you want to ask directly to ankita of course we are free to do that as well okay so uh, next question i would like to ask you ankita we all heard about social listening so do you think social listening is a part of unified marketing automation and if yes then how it is so social listening again it, it is the truth we we accept it or we we deny it but yeah. it is the truth it is is it part of the unified marketing it has now it has to become a part of a unified marketing because of the factors that social listening is right now the power is limited to the top top companies top organizations it needs to come to each and every person uh, each and every uh, each and every organization should be able to access it be it you are in the b2b space or b2c space just because you are in a b2b space and uh, you do not have access to a end consumer data doesn't mean you do not uh do not need to know it because a lot of things can be improved uh having access to such data so social listening again is very important overall uh yeah. how how do you actually listen and use it to your advantage is something i would say if if social listening is used in a very uh, optimized way where it actually benefits the consumer this is something uh, what what should be done rather than exploitation and uh, clearly uh, by by some uh, very tricky i would say uh, tricky lines and uh, tricky uh, uh, headings and all of those instead of using it 
to actually communicate the value proposition and solve the problem that the consumer has uh, use that data to utilize in solving the consumer's problem is something I think uh, will actually help the social listening powerful data to be put in good use. Okay, okay. I hope everyone must be listening to you and they will be taking a note out of it. Okay, so next question will be one of the most popular uses of marketing automation is creating email workflow. So please enlighten us with your, the ways of email workflow to enhance customer experience. What you are using for your workplace and housing. Oh, I think that's very important. So, you know, most of the marketers, they do forget that. Uh, they just feel that okay this is some email that i've created and this is an offer yeah. that i need to send and because it's been taken a decision that okay i have this 20 percent of offer that i have to send uh, out in an emailer but if the consumer is again and give, again giving you signals that okay this is not something i'm looking he's not opening your email or either he's not clicking so uh, email workflows become very important because when you understand the consumer's need and okay so for in terms of like we did i can give you a clear example here okay. so like we did for uh, like we did for our flipkart consumers okay. so our flipkart consumers were very segregated so the, whenever there is a sale that is going live okay. we just inform them Okay. So we, okay, so they, just by looking at the subject line, they could easily know, okay, the sale is live, you know, yeah. so they never opened it. We, we never got open rates on that. Uh, okay. We never got any clicks on that. So okay. that became as a problem. So then what we do, we did is we again tested it by sending them another, where we actually installed a special coupon code. We installed okay. a special offer on a special category. Mm -hmm. And another approach we tried was a multi-category emailer, where we were where we were also giving them offers of mobile, fashion, electron, grocery, and so on. So, and then we we segregated. Okay, there was a there were a certain set of users who are just interested in category specific offers. There are certain set of users who are interested in a deal level, like a certain product level deal offers. So, uh, we could easily segregate and create the workflows out of it. We know that okay, this is a workflow that that would work for our category specific users. And going ahead, we gave them offers which were category specific in the category that they showed interest in. I mean, just just imagine somebody is looking to buy a laptop, and I'm continuously sending him fashion offers. I am just I'm just I'm just uh, making the user really agree, and he's gonna be like, why sending me this? If I've given yeah. you a signal, please act on that signal and send me offers that are according to the laptop. Hmm. Maybe I'm not buying it immediately, but as soon as I, it clicks, I get a good offer, I'll just buy it. So so that that's why workflows come, uh, email workflows are very important. And uh, actually we have been a user of Easy Sendy uh, in our earlier days. Uh, and uh, so I think work is very important workflow creation and autoresponders so all these are very important because they they actually set the they actually make as marketeers they make your life easy of course of course yes definitely okay so i think megmala from our team she wanted to ask a question so over to you megmala hi ankita Hi, Nimala. So sorry. First of all, sorry because my uh, I am not okay, so I'm not posting the webinar. So my question, as we are speaking about the uh, web three previously, so my question is, what would a metaverse customer experience mean for the business? Okay. So, uh, in terms of metaverse customers, so lot of our uh, lot of our meta a lot of our brands that we are uh, currently working with, they have already started introducing their products on metaverse. Like uh, there was a color uh, color show that got launched, and uh, they launched an entire. Uh, this was a summer dance reality show. They actually launched an entire uh, universe on metaverse. So this is not something that is going to happen. It's already started happening. And uh, people could go uh, enter the metaverse and learn dance steps and all of those. 
for us what we plan is that while you're walking around and you're seeing and suddenly you might be able to see a coupon and yeah. we might tell you that just uh, you also take your cash back on this product that you're buying i think uh, that's what for us it is whatever you see whatever you uh, wherever you are you get we never want you to pay a full price and that's the uh, motive that we as a company operate on okay. we as indians love savings and uh, we want all the indians to do savings on wherever whatever they are buying thank you ankita so thank you, uh, i will i will like to ask one more question from my side as we are telling about the talking about the customer experience i would like to know ki how unified marketing automation will help the organization to upgrade the digital customer experience or uh, like what your brand delivers mm -hmm. Oh, for sure i think uh, for for any brand uh, to to give a unified experience to the consumer you know it is very important uh, the sales person and the customer executive should be talking the same language you know there is a sales person who is in touch with a customer and he uh, or a, or in in our case we have generally influencers as well who are working with us yeah. on a platform called only so uh, if a sales person is committing something uh, and if the customer executive is committing something else or denying it it is it is a big it is a big mistake any brand can make so uh, a channels or, or a platforms like these can actually bring all the teams on the same page can bring all the teams uh, and uh, help them talk the same language that the other team has talked and not contradict it because okay Uh, there might be an answer that okay we can still the customer executive can go back and say that no i was not aware about it but somewhere you've created a dent and yeah. the dent is difficult to fix yeah. so also for so a unified marketing channel i think works wonderfully for that and uh, tasks a task alignment or let's say anything how important i think communication uh, one is the key that uh, that is really useful uh second is that there is there are no commitments that are being ignored or or being uh, disrespected i would say because if any other team is saying and going back that okay this is not going to happen it's a disrespect that happens be it in b2b or be it in b2c in your case the uh, the uh, the amount is much higher in our case the amount is much so uh, much lesser but the quantity is much higher you know because we dealing with n number of customers on a daily basis our support executive would be dealing with 30000 50000 customer uh, support on on one day so so that is why it is always important that you keep up to your promises and uh, unified marketing experience uh, platforms is what actually keeps them in aligned thank you ankita over to you ankita okay thank you ankita uh, thank you thank you so much ankita for enlightening us with so many detail in detail thing about the customer so last question from my end actually i would like to ask what would a metaverse customer experience mean for a business a metaverse custom it would be it is like a 3d world you get into hmm. and uh, it is it, it is very wonderful as immersive it is uh, but it is very um, uh, for for any uh, for any customer or for any brand it is a good opportunity uh, because customers are really attracted to it uh, how you utilize in a way that it actually benefits the consumer uh only thing that uh, in metaverse while we are thinking about it one thing we need to be very careful one thing we need to be very careful about is that it's not addictive because addictive things people will want to get rid of if your product is something that people are getting addicted to for us for the, so then it will become a fad and you don't want your product to become a fad it should sure. it should be sustaining the idea should be sustaining the beat for consumer beat for brand the sustenance is very important yeah one day coming becoming a be, being part of the hype and just going away is not going to work uh, we are a uh, we are a eight year old bootstrap and a profitable company we have 2 million plus users mm -hmm. on the platform 
and we've built it sustainably. I mean, uh, the only reason uh, we could sustain it is our good customer service. At the end of the day, if you are able to make our customer happy, and it's not always about saying yes, because there have been times when we we clearly said no. Okay, I can't give you this cashback because the you uh, the Amazon has rejected it or so on. So it is it is about keeping in line because if you are only saying yes, somewhere that point is going to come where you will have to just back off of because course. it's a certain amount that you can spend on a consumer. Yeah. So even in the metaverse, it is all about the immersive experience. Uh, all, all of us as brands need to create an immersive experience where we have a strong value prop preposition for the consumer, but he doesn't get addicted to it. Uh, and it becomes it becomes like everyday thing and it becomes something that, that is very useful that he's helped he's able to do something he's able to save some money like in our case he's able to save money by using it and so on okay and the entertainment value is always there yeah of course <laughs> Thank you so much, Ankita. So yeah, I think I learned a lot about the unified marketing and again, you told me a lot about the customer journey and customer experience as well. So I would like to move ahead with the Q&A round where we have a lot of questions <laughs> waiting for us to help all our uh, webinar attendees. So the first question is coming from Jane. How a B2B company can build trust? Is marketing mm -hmm. useful for B2B to building in trust? Okay. Uh, I think for B2B, the uh, trust factor is even, it starts from the pitching time as well. Yeah. The trust that the brand places in you, you know, let's say you have a SaaS product, which is a CRM or something. Uh, and, uh, you know, integrations take a lot of time. Uh, so the so it starts the building uh, trust building needs to start from day one. So it is very important that your salespeople don't overcome it. You know we've had experiences where uh, where B two B salesman is committing something else, and when it goes yeah. to the tech team for integrations, they they are, uh, they end up saying, okay, this is not possible. This is something that we are working on, but right now we don't have this. I mean. Sell what you have, don't sell what you don't have. Yeah. Just because your competition has it and you you have your own USPs. Sell your own USPs. Uh, I always I always tell every salesperson that I meet, I mean, don't make me regret later. So uh, how do you build trust is by, uh, it's a very simple thing, deliver what you commit. It's, I mean, I, I think I can summarize it in one thing, deliver what you commit. Yeah, of course, don't overcommit what you can't. So yeah, definitely. I think this is something we all should take a note and we should definitely tell our sales team, our marketing team to not encourage all these kind of things. Okay, thank you so much, Ankita. I hope, Jane, your uh, doubt must have been cleared out from here. Okay. So my next question is, uh, so should Thing. Unified chatbot work with unified marketing automation? Question mark. So I think she's uh, trying to say, does my chatbot work with unified marketing automation? Yes, unified chat chatbots do work, but the chatbots need to be designed in a way that the hand holding really there. So, uh, to understand where but now is not getting the response from the chatbot and now it needs to be and then it needs to go to the consumer, customer executive that handshake has to be really smooth uh, in terms of unified marketing platform yes it is a very good add-on uh, and I think most of the uh, of most of these platforms do offer the chatbot services uh, but it is also important that if they can somewhere uh, suggest or say that, okay, now is the time, even if the customer is not asked for it, preempt it and then actually uh, make the handshake happen and take it to the customer executive rather than just a chatbot, same answer coming in and in. So it needs to be done in a very thought about, the chatbot needs to be uh, very thought about based on every business's needs and again, when it needs to move to a personal executive, it needs to move. Okay, 
Okay, Shruti, I hope your doubt must have been cleared from uh, from the thing what Ankita is saying. Okay, so next question is from how is the inbound marketing different uh, than marketing automation? I think inbound marketing and marketing automation are I would say complementary things. They're not different. Mm -hmm. Inbound marketing when 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 a person is uh, calling himself, I think each uh, in in our case inbound marketing does not really stand much because consumers come to the site on their own. But I think in the case of B2B marketing, uh, the inbound calling that happens and all of those things. So I think it is a very much part of the marketing process uh, systems only. So it, it is various steps and uh, these are not two different things. I think they are one subset of the other and I think that's what my understanding says. Okay. Okay, so uh, fine. Thank you so much, Ankita, for letting us know. I hope ki, I hope ki, Kriti, your doubt must have been cleared from this. So next question is coming from Bharat. Which CRM do you use to implement unified tools for marketing? So we use various. Uh, uh, we use Zoho as a unified tool, and uh, that that pretty much. Uh, covers all our use cases. So we use the Zoho marketing tool. Okay. And uh, Bharat, if you want to use a unified marketing tool, please go and have a look on Aritic. It is a wonderful tool, a very simplified. You'll definitely be loving it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ankita. Okay. So I would like to ask all my um, attendees if they have any question they directly want to ask Ankita, they're free to do. So if any question is coming our way, please let us know. Okay, I think I think all our doubts has been cleared. Thank you so much, Ankita, for letting us know a detailed discussion on unified marketing. It was really great connecting you and discussing all about it. So, next, uh, I will request Mr. Ankit Prakash to enlighten us and share his idea about achieving customer experience through unified platform. And for that, actually, I would like you all to introduce you to Mr. Ankit Prakash. So he is the principal founder of Easy Sendy and Aritic, a full stock integrated sales and marketing automation platform for the B2B uh, small and medium enterprise brand. So Ankit, if what is your view on this? Hey, uh, thank you so much, Aparna. So uh, due to uh, due to the uh, electricity issue, I had to uh, come on through mobile and uh, I could see a really good discussion, Ankita, and you all have put up and even the, the audience members out, out here with us uh, have uh, have been asking and, uh, you know, a lot of many questions. So uh, what we have seen uh, through our journey when we had launched these these platforms back in 2015, so uh, very first we had launched Easy Sendy with which, which used to be very small uh, email marketing application and it, it used to be a hybrid email marketing application that used to channel your email deliveries uh, through uh, through multiple of uh, regional uh, email delivery APIs. And it it, it gone on, it, it went on fire and everyone like uh, was then since 2015 and have been using this so looking at this success where we could see uh, where we could see singular channel have been performing really well we jumped into uh, our other brand that is aritic and uh, we we started building a whole of marketing automation crm and then disk uh, disk platforms for uh, businesses so every businesses came up with uh, different requirements and then they started using all these platforms then fast forward 2018 we saw the emergence of uh, of chatbot into the market and then chatbot one by one it went viral onto the mobile phone also and then we started looking into chatbots becoming quite uh, famous among even the chat based messages then uh, then facebook chatbot came into uh, came into the market and uh, facebook chatbot uh, started uh, functioning really well uh, then we got to see a lot of users using these chatbot on different channels 
uh, WhatsApp also came into uh, came into uh, came into the picture where uh, where our customers started building chatbot interactions on their uh, on their WhatsApp. We could see, I mean, there was uh, a kind of uh, whole expansion of marketing across different channels. And uh, right now, if you will ask me, I would say uh, along all the channels, the conversations the appetite of the conversation, the intent of the conversation, the depth of the conversation of all engaged customers are quite different for everyone. For example, uh, in case of WhatsApp, we could see web, uh, we could see WhatsApp is quite famous among South Asian countries, uh, whereas in different parts you have uh, you have Line, Alipay, and then AliChat. And then you also have a lot of different uh, conversation-based uh, uh, tools where the where the uh, where the customer interactions are happening today. So we could see all these interactions very first started coming into into help desk and chatbot, and then uh, and then now these these applications are quite available uh, directly in front of the website and the mobile app. Now no longer the chatbot is only required in desk, but uh, we could see there's a beautiful journey that uh, that comes up through chatbot right from in front of the website or uh, where we could see some of the pioneers in the leading markets let us say drift which which is uh, which is pioneer into the segment conversational marketing so what we saw is uh, is from last uh, 2020 onwards post pandemic says majority of the decision makers were struggling to match the data across all these platforms so let us say you have chatbot running on three different applications you have ad as a channel you have email as a channel you have sms as a channel you have uh, uh, you have landing page as one more communication channel through which you are uh, having interaction with your customers. Uh, majority of the decision makers were kind of forced to take singular decision on based on the singular channel. If the channel is being engaged on SMS, they are able to take only those uh, only those into consideration, and we are not able to see overall lifetime value of the customers across several channels, how they were engaging, what were their priorities of that channel. So this is where we brought in all of the platform together and then and then started building workflows and data workflows uh, workflows across the channel. So now let us suppose if uh, if your customer has raised a service ticket, your marketing mail or promotional email or sales-based email will never go to those customers. So it's a very simple example other examples there's a ton of example where we could see right now our customers are have integrated with uh, external chatbots where they are pulling in data if something happens uh, happens out there then send them this email trigger or send them this ad or show them this set of ad so like that they are automating all these complex user journeys customer journeys, lead acquisition management, and then they are also engaging across the marketing funnel. So you could see it, it completely depends on where your customers are available. I mean, gone are those days to DR and B2B, but again, even in B2B, it is not at all we are dependent on email. I mean, email is a, email has become uh, only a tool to store your uh, your email messages. So we call it as uh, I mean e emails today. It has become a Dropbox, a Dropbox with a right. uh, with a address. So so we we could see the email is no longer it, it is it is getting used as a active conversation channel. So your active conversation channel has completely shifted to WhatsApp. Your uh, your support based uh, support based interactions may have shifted to Twitter, or emergency support system has completely shifted to Twitter. And then you have uh, you have different uh, uh, discussions happening at uh, LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live, and at different places. And now you could see uh, the social media platforms are not getting used only for interaction. It is it has become a day to day product where everyone is using this product. Uh, where uh, we are getting used at the uh, at the customer, and uh, we could see all these use cases happening uh, happening across the platform. So this is where the customers started coming to us, saying that okay, we need something unified. 
uh, it should not be uh, you know chatbot is getting used by support but chatbot is today used to schedule demo to is used to schedule discussions then uh, a lot of resolution happens over chatbot so we could see uh, the usability of the product happening across the platforms in a very different way so uh, so end customers are available available at multi touch point so building these kind of workflows journey for the customers these kind of triggers have become really complex i mean it, it's not going to be one man so or a two person so in a company it has become really complex uh, where the marketing operations team came into uh, came into existence and now the marketing operations team at any company which is almost growing at uh, 10 to 15% cgr so this is the growth rate of the of the marketing team that is happening at mid enterprise across the globe in the marketing team to handle all these kind of complexities interactions and then putting them over the platform uh, making them used across so i believe i'm able to explain uh, the challenges the solution and how how our platform is is getting uh, used across uh, across the customers and different Our partners are selling uh, the platform in, in different ways across different markets. Yes, yes, Ankit. Thank you so much for uh, telling us all in detail. I hope all our attendees will must note out of it because B two B. I think uh, you explained it all in detail, so that we can go ahead. Maybe as a marketers can go ahead and again follow these norms and achieve our goal, what we are aiming for. So thank you so much, Ankit. yeah so yeah so uh, within this journey we have also observed there is uh, no one solution or one yeah. uh, one channel fit for all i mean uh, marketers we want to give them independence to execute campaigns on several channels and then and then bring and then bring uh, bring the better uh, better converting solution for the company right so that is why yeah. different channel integrations are required different channels are required uh, to have different interactions so today uh, today if if you will ask my customers are only available on uh, rcs or or sms my customers are available on whatsapp my answer is is no your customer is is available everywhere but their attention may be different i mean for a customer residing in vietnam their uh, their focus will be on uh, on on different uh, on different messenger Uh, which is there on mobile phone, or uh, they do not have it. They might not have attention on their uh, their email. They might not have attention on SMS. So, like that, in different region, in different products, different service lines, the customers have very different focus. For example, uh, there are certain customers uh, with whom we started working back in January. they they said our customer base is completely is still available over phone call i mean they are not even available over sms or whatsapp so in that case integrating all the channels bringing bringing uh, bringing these kind of solutions to the marketers where their customers are available is 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 helping them out getting the brand more closer to to their customers so now today for example i mean right from a single call trigger to all of the conversion they are able to measure uh, measure the impact of the marketing through call inbound call outbound call or reach out call then uh, then sms and then even uh, even quite rarely couple of those those customer sets have been using whatsapp or they have started using whatsapp so now on our platform they are able to measure right, right from call to the conversion uh, which has impacted into the conversion these kind of channels uh, play a key role today uh, today in a whole of the customer journey and the whole of the customer journey need to be designed onto the platform that is where uh, where whole of uh, the canvas workflow designer work works it cross so i'll tell you i mean this kind of journey has been broken for quite long in the market today we are talking about any of the product platforms let us say marketo so marketo had to restrict themselves only on emails if we are talking about uh, hubspot so hubspot only has email as a workflow to engage their customers and they have only a notification channel as a sms so you can't engage your customers over sms in that case you can engage those customers only and only over email so 
it is not a one fit solution for all I and mean, in uh, businesses out here in case of india in case of uh, southeast facing countries they are they are available on different channels and those engagements are very critical to those channels so this is where the workflows uh, workflows we started building and then today we are over here with uh, not only channels but different applications triggers are available through different applications and this is what it is uh, it is bring and and the branch to become more closer to their customers correct yes yep. yes uncle. so uh, any question i'm from my end if anyone oh. want to ask any other question there is one question uh, from uh, Vartika, uh, or what ROI can be calculated from the automation marketing tool? Automation marketing tool. So uh, it is 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 because uh, I have seen uh, many customers. Uh, using the marketing automation and uh, and connecting the ROI, it is completely dependent on how deep you take, how deep you. So if you have built multi-channel, multi-stage, and then you have built uh, connected multiple applications, then you can uh, then you can manage complete life cycle value of your customer how much revenue they are giving, uh, at what point they are giving revenue, at what point your sales team is are connected to them, at what point uh, they are available for uh, for the sales cycle because all these sales cycle are not uh, uh, month-based sales cycle. It is more about uh, annual sales cycle that happens onto the platform and ACBs uh, need to be connected with, uh, with the lifetime value of the uh, customers. So uh, it, it completely depends on how deep you are using uh, using these kind of platforms for your brand and for your customers how much different campaigns you are executing onto the platform there are customers we could see they are executing inbound marketing campaigns completely they are executing a uh, whole of b2b marketing campaigns they are uh, they are executing all of uh, multi channel campaigns omni channel campaigns and uh, they are engaging customers throughout their cycle and throughout their business cycle and their uh, their customer journey and then they are bringing out really a great ROI for the company so I would say I mean if we are connecting uh, connecting all these points from the marketing perspective you can connect the revenue of the company uh, through whole of uh, whole of the implementation process okay yep uh, any questions uh, uh, I hope I explained all uh, all these in detail yeah. yeah. Ankita, if you want to answer. Um, I think Ankit covered it pretty well. So as far as ROI of the business is concerned for any of us, it is about, about getting maximum customers and minimum costs. And uh, this is the kind of balance we all want to strike. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are looking to strike that, you know, how can we get maximum download at the minimum cost? And how can we reduce our costs? Uh, because it affects the revenue. So uh, ROI for any marketing is very important. But again, overall brand building is also very important. There are some things that might be, that might not be ROI driven, like influencer marketing. Uh, so even uh, even at only we have tried to optimize uh, the uh, the. Influencer the only can actually track much of that this particular influencer has given us how much sales. So, uh, so I think that is very important, and being able to, uh, unless you are, unless you are able to see everything, unless every data is in front of you, I think uh, it is not possible. On, on, 
and it has become possible only because of platforms like Early and uh, uh, platforms like Easy Sendy and so on. So I think these these things is what overall is helping us brands optimize the ROIs. Correct, correct. Thank you, thank you so much, Ankita, for uh, letting us know. Thank you so much, Ankit, for helping uh, helping us with more of the detail into B two B as well. So any other question anyone ask want to ask? Much welcome. Yeah, they are free to yeah. ask if thank anyone you, want to ask. Okay, so fine then, uh, so taking the meeting forward. So firstly, thank you so much Ankita for the insightful discussion. I would like to uh, thank our sponsor, Niche Marketers and Pritbor also. Niche Marketer is a community of credible and expert marketers in India. You all can look at the website. Uh, we'll, we'll put it in our chat board. Okay, other than that, uh, before we end the discussion, I would like to tell our audience that as, uh, as you all know, Aritnik is a uniform, unified marketing automation platform for B2B and D2C business. If you are interested for a discovery call, here is the link to the uh, scheduled demo with our uh, executive. So I'll be putting it in our chat board. Please have a look and if you want, you can definitely go and uh, schedule a demo as well. So. Yes, I have put it in our chat board. Okay, so thank you so much Ankita, thank you so much Ankit for uh, the super engaging session. I am sure everyone must have learned a lot. Now I would like to add here that we are organizing a webinar on a weekly basis every Thursday 5 p.m. for the upcoming month. So for next week we have planned on a very crucial topic that is secret of successful data driven marketing. So I am providing the link in the chat board and registration is open so you can go and register. We can also have, uh, we have also made a WhatsApp group where we do uh, give update about the webinar topic. So if you are interested, you can join the group as well. So I'll put uh, that as well in the chat board. Okay, so we will uh, put this webinar on our YouTube channel, Aritech. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel for rec recorded version of the webinar. Thank you so much everyone for your support and yeah. We are willing to see you all in our next set of webinar. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, everyone. Thank, thank you, Ankita. Thank, thank you, Aparna. Thank you, Meghalo. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.